We're going to look now at Luke, I believe it's 11.33 through 36, about the eye being the lamp for the body. Let me read you what this says. No one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all those who enter the house. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when it's unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant, as though a floodlight were filling you with light. So um, this is kind of a cool section, and um, and I think it's interesting. It, it's been interesting to me to read it in the context of the previous sections. So um, first when it talks about a light providing light to the whole house, I, you know, I see this as saying um, that when we are with God, he is the light providing light to the whole house or to everything basically that his light falls on. And then taking that to a personal level and saying, your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. Okay, so this is saying, um, if, you're, and if your eye is good, then your whole body is filled with light. So um, this is, I think this is interesting after the last section where it talks about um, the people needing to, uh, the Queen of Sheba, and it talks about Solomon and the people there, um, comparing it to the people there and saying, you refuse to listen. So this is, now we're still talking, we're talking about another sense. Um, we, first we talked about the sense of hearing, good comparison, and not listening. Now we're talking about eyes and not seeing. So, um, and, and it hasn't been that long ago that he talks about, um, praising God for things being hidden from people who couldn't see them. So, so it's seeming to me, and this is also, of course, just on the tails of the section of talking about, um, the, basically, I think he was, my theory is that he is saying that the Pharisees and the people who were exorcising demons for them were doing this with Satan's power. And now, and then he said, uh, now he says, be careful. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. So he's getting to the subtlety, I think, of how we often think that we are um, right, air quotes, right. Or, or good, or godly, or righteous, and we're not really. I mean, this reminds me of what happened to me on Saturday morning that, you know, I went to the, my, my time of solitude, ready to do emotional processing, angry, full of demands, and, um, and I felt right. I felt like I was in the right. And then God showed me my true heart and how I was really using my anger and, and, and living in this anger instead of trusting him and and that I really needed to repent and soften my heart. So my eye was was not healthy when I was seeing this from a selfish, angry perspective. Of, and, and by selfish, I mean, I wanted good things for other people, but I was trying to be the one in control. I was trying to control the situation instead of leaving that in God's hands. So, um, so my eye was not healthy. And then, and then after the prayer of recollection, God showed me my true self. It was like he opened my eyes and he opened my ears and my heart was soft. And I wanted to repent because I didn't want to be that way, but I hadn't even, it wasn't like I hadn't even seen that way before. It wasn't like I was like, um, choosing to do evil. I thought I was doing right. And I think that's a little bit about what this section is getting to, is the subtlety of thinking that we're in the right when we're not, and how important it is to, I don't know, just to keep coming before God, examining our own true motives, and doing the internal work of what we're really about, and if we're really trusting. This trust thing, it's just going to a whole new level. I mean, I the level of release that I think God is calling me to, like in that situation, to 
to not even make suggestions to the people that I thought needed suggestions, just to trust God with that. So, um, and, and just on a side note of trust, um, another thing I'm really trusting is a, a conversation that I need to have with a friend. I don't even have the conversation set up. Um, I'm just praying that God will provide that opportunity. Um, and, and it kind of involves how to go forward with some decisions and, um, I'm just praying about that. So, um, God, I pray for your help. God, I thank you again for opening my eyes and helping my eye to be healthy. This is a struggle for me, not to judge, not to be condemning, to really release that, not to get my significance from trying to be better or trying to find fault with other people. And it's such a gift when he helps me in this way. Thank you, God.